vegan athletes. She also has a lot of uh, great blogs where she interviews all vegans from all different walks of life, uh, people in business, uh, sports people, uh, and so forth. Uh, talks also about uh, cooking. In fact, uh, I've still got one of her recipe books from 2006, which we used to sell at the Vegetarian Victoria, and they were very, very popular. So I've still got them, actually, they're excellent recipes. So, so when it comes to veganism, there's very few people that are uh, covered with such a wide variety of uh, topics like Lee Chantel does. But uh, today uh, she will be talking about ethics beyond the plate. So uh, stay tuned uh, and, uh, for this presentation because it's uh, about to start right now. Everybody, Lee Chantel. Thank you very much. I hope everyone's enjoying themselves today. Are you? Are you? I can hear That's much better. Much better. Um, so, thank you very much, Mark, and everyone for putting on World Vegan Day today. It's been pretty cool. Um, everyone looks a bit far down the back. Come up a bit closer. I like it when you're closer. Um, so, yeah, today, can people read this? Can people see it? Okay, that's good. So today I'm talking about ethics beyond the plate, and I just thought I'd go through my background a bit first. So um, what I do is I'm a published author, an international speaker and a consultant, and I go around the country and the world speaking about different things, so including veganism, vegan um, lifestyle, and I do a lot of things for my job, which include um, talks about marketing and promotion and etiquette and things like that. So I've been doing that for quite a while. Here's some of my websites down here. You see that pointer when I do that? Let's wing it. Um, so my background um, in veganism is I became vegetarian in 1994. And I became vegetarian when I realized the link between the life that existed, me, and the death I was about to consume, which was the leg of lamb. And I made that connection and stopped eating red meat since then. That was when I was in year 10 of school. And I became vegetarian because I didn't want anyone to die. I didn't want anyone to get hurt just for me. And when I found out about the dairy and egg industries a couple of years after, when I finished school, I realised that these industries were really harming animals. And you know, it fakes worse than death in a lot of cases. So, I went vegetarian because I didn't want to hurt anyone and I went vegan after I found out about the dairy and egg industries because I didn't want anyone to get hurt in the name of those things either. So that's been 20 years in January, so that's quite um, a few years. It seems a bit weird. It seems like yesterday, also seems like quite a long time ago. I run a website called VivaLaVegan.net and that's been going online for over 10 years. And um, as Mark said, there's a lot of content on there. I've done a lot of interviews with a variety of people. There's a lot of recipes, there's a lot of blogs. And as Mark mentioned, um, it started just after I finished my natural release studies when I started releasing recipe calendars. And I did that in 2006, 7 or 8. And um, the website really grew organically and a lot of people asked for certain things. So I thought, oh yeah, I'll put it online and it's just kept growing and growing. So that's been online for over 10 years and there's heaps, heaps of content on there. Um, there's podcasts, videos, interviews, recipes, so much stuff. And um, yeah, I've been talking about the vegan lifestyle for over 10 years as well. So I hope you enjoyed today's talk. And I've released a few books as well. Um, some print books. My latest book is on vegan athletes. This one here that can't really see the photo of. Um, and some other books. And I've got a heap of ebooks also online. Um, you can have a look at veganathletesbook.com for my latest book. And Billy Simmons at the Prana on store. He's selling the book today as well for $25 if there's any left. So today I wanted to talk about ethics and stuff that is beyond just food and diet. So if you have a look on um, an internet search, a mainstream media search, a lot of people are just focusing on um, predominantly on health and weight loss terms. So I think also the mainstream media is focusing primarily on white females 
kind of particular thin females. And this is what people are seeing as what a vegan is. So today I'd just like us to all expand our thoughts a bit and think about something different and learn something new. So over the past 20 years that I've been vegan, there's been a lot of changes. It used to be very, very hard to be vegan and you had to give up things. And I was still, I was just saying to someone before, I still have that scarcity mentality. Like from 20 years ago when you went somewhere and you saw something that was vegan, vegan cake, you had to buy it because you just never knew when you are going to get any more vegan cake. So I've still got that idea in my head, even though I'll probably get cake tomorrow as well. But, you know, it's um, a bit hard to get over that sort of idea. And back in the day, everyone knew what a vegan meant. So a lot of people nowadays are saying things online like, I'm vegan for the animals. And it, it, that, that used to be given years ago. Nowadays, it's so easy to go vegan, and it's so easy to stay vegan. There's so many products, businesses, items, and stores that are vegan, and I hope that you support them if you can. So I've noticed over the past, say, five years, especially with the mainstream media, there's a lot more focus on terms um, that relate to eating or not eating certain foods. So, um, and in particular, say food terms, I'm sure a lot of you have heard, you know, high carb, low fat, raw vegan, paleo vegan, all those sort of terms. And there's a lot of focus on allergen specific diets. So I'm sure a lot of you have been to places and they just assume being vegan has something to do with not eating gluten. So everyone's a bit confused about what exactly a vegan is. So I want us today to just cover some things that are beyond just food. So there's some words I'm, I'm going to mention that you may or may not know about. And if you don't know a word, I'd really like for you to go and um, research it and find out what it means. So some things I want to talk about are ethics, intersectionality, oppression, privilege, compassion, and effective communication. And I normally talk about this for an hour or two, so we're going to just try and get as much in as we can. And so I know um, seeing a lot of um, the information and the media about um, veganism, that maybe sometimes the term plant-based should be used instead of vegan because um, there's a lot more that relates to veganism than just food or just what you eat or do not eat. So um, I find it hard sometimes, and I know that words and meanings change over time, but I find it hard when I've got a lot more in common with someone who's a meat eater and who's interested in social justice issues than someone who's vegan primarily just to a pot in a bikini. So in case you don't know, a vegan is someone who chooses not to consume any of these things. I hope you can read it. Animal flesh, animal secretion, animal products, animal byproducts. But as I said, veganism is simply not just a diet. And the word vegan was, was, um, was um, coined in 1944 by Donald Watson and he's from the UK Vegan Society. No, can you ever read the text? Can you see it okay? okay. So hopefully you read that. So the non-dietary aspects of veganism include a few things like this. So vegans, we choose not to participate in using animals for clothing, animal products for, say, cosmetics and household goods, animal use, like as in animal testing, and using animals for entertainment. So vegans are against all of these things. We don't want to be using, abusing, exploiting animals in any way. And for me, veganism, it's a set of ethical guidelines that a lot of us commit to. And there's many, many reasons why people go vegan. So for me, I went vegan primarily for animals, animal rights and ethics. But you could also go vegan for health issues, environmental issues, human labour rights issues, feminism and social justice issues. And so for me, um, I think veganism encompasses all the things that I care about and that I'm passionate about, including consciousness raising, 
non-oppression, non-objectification and anti-consumerism. And I went primarily, primarily vegan because of animal rights and I've also been involved in environmental movements, feminist movements and nowadays I'm interested in how veganism works with other movements and other social justice movements and trying to work out how we can work together to, to build on things and to make things a bit better. But I enjoy sharing this message to others and I think for me veganism is my way of leading by example to promote peace, love and compassion. And I really think veganism is a positive way to show the world how you how you're trying to make the world a bit better and show people and lead by example by doing that. And it's a great way um, to live in line with your beliefs and putting compassion into action. And so today, hopefully, I want you to always be open to learning different reasons um, for why people become vegan. And hopefully that you find out some different reasons as well. Because, you know, it's really important to get people to be vegan, but we want people to stay vegan too. And the more reasons someone has to be vegan or to um, be involved in something, then hopefully they will stay vegan for much longer. So vegans don't participate in the use, abuse, exploitation of any animals for any reason. But so today what I want to talk about is things beyond just diet. Who likes puffins? I really love puffins, that's cute. And um, so for me, veganism is just one step. So it's really important, it's a really massive step, but it's really just one step. And hopefully you've had a look at all the great not-for-profits and all the great groups that are here today because there's a lot of people who are doing some really great work. And um, I want you to think about how you can use information that other people already have created to share the word, to spread the vegan movement. And whether or not you agree with a certain group, I don't 100% agree with any groups that exist, but you can always find information that they have is relevant to what you're trying to promote. And I want you to think about doing your own research and working out things for yourself. Because a lot of people nowadays, they just see people online who are, you know, quite popular, who are maybe the most vocal, the most aggressive online, and they follow them. So I want you not just to believe whatever people are telling you, especially me, I could be wrong. It does happen sometimes. But I want you to go online and find a few things out for yourself. Just prove them, disprove them, learn something else. And yeah, just because someone's you know speaking the most, most aggressive, has the most followers, it does not mean they're the most right. Okay. And um, does anyone know what the term intersectionality means? Has anyone heard of that before? So in case you're not aware, um, a really basic way to put it is um, for people to, like other social justice movements and how they can all link together, how we can all work together. And some examples of um, intersectionality at the bottom here, they can address things like racism, classism, ableism, homophobia, sexism, ageism and speciesism. So what I wanted to do was just break things down into a couple of different topics. First one's going to be health. And I want to ask you a few different questions. And I'd like you to think about these things, maybe do a bit more research on them as well. So for health, um, considering nowadays vegan food in particular isn't necessarily that healthy, should veganism still be promoted as a healthy diet? What do you think about that? So, and um, should veganism be promoted as a cure all? So, I see a lot of people doing that quite often. And what can we do to encourage people um, to try all different types of vegan healthy food? There's a lot of people, in particular um, young females, who come to veganism because it's a way to restrict their diet under the guise of healthy eating. So, we want people to be aware that there's a multitude of things that you can eat as, on a vegan diet. And how can we encourage people to commit to the lifestyle long term? What are these ways that we can do these things? 
And how can we show there's different types of vegans? Because we don't all look the same. So from an environmental perspective, as vegans, we're not contributing to a lot of the things that a primarily animal-based diet does. But have you thought about where your food comes from? Have you thought about things, for example, your favourite mock meat products that come from the UK or the US? They're coming over here, you know, the packaging that's involved, the food miles involved. Have you thought about these sort of things? Have you thought, thought about food scarcity, food security, um, and what about supporting in-season produce, non-GMO, organically grown stuff? And, you know, a lot of people, I know a lot of people who um, are vegan, but they really don't care about people. And they, they quite happily talk about that all the time. But, you know, humans, we're animals too. So please remember this. Please be a bit nicer to each other. And I want you to think about some other things, about the ethics involved in things that you buy, or maybe things that you have or you'd like to have. But what about... Um, ethics and conditions involved in manufacturing process of things. Um, what about how are your favourite products produced? Do you know about this? Um, what about people who actually make the products that you buy? Do you know if they're getting paid a fair wage? Do you know if they're getting looked after? And do you think defending one type of female body is okay um, and to the detriment of another while abusing another type of body. And what about using different types of bodies and different types of people who are vegan? Because there's a lot of whitewashing in the vegan movement, but there's a hell of a lot more different people of colour that are involved. And what about some social justice issues? Have you thought about um, how we can participate in other movements, how we can learn from other movements and how we can move forward? And for, for me, it's really important that we focus on how to promote veganism in the most inclusive way so that everyone feels that they can be part of the movement, so that everyone feels that they can buy certain products and get involved in certain things. And that brings me to privilege. So um, the, we have a lot of privileges that we really don't understand or can't really uh, comprehend unless we get them taken away from us. So I'd like you just to think about, and in particular, when you're dealing with people, you know, outreach or even online, I want to think about the way that you deal with people and the way you treat people and interact with them. So you need to think about um, being mindful of others and exercising compassion. And I really hope that, um, you know, we all think we know the answers, we all think that our way is the best way of doing things, but it's not. It's really not. And we need to always be trying to learn from other people. And here's a quote at the bottom that I think is really important. And we all have choices, but some people have much better choices than others. So please think about that in relation to the way you're trying to promote veganism. And keep in mind, here's a few things here. Some people cannot choose to not eat particular foods. Some people can't afford to buy new vegan clothes, vegan shoes, things like this. Some people can't access transportation to get to events, to get to new restaurants, to get to things like that. Some people um, are not mentally or physically able to do certain things. A lot of, say, activists think that, um, you know, going to protest is the best form of activism you can do. But some people just mentally are not able to do that, physically can't go to those things. That doesn't mean they're less of an activist than someone else. They have other skills and other ways that can, they can be active. You know, some people don't feel comfortable around other people from another sector, for example. And some people don't feel they belong in certain areas because they don't see someone that looks like them. And some people don't even feel as though their opinion is valid or that they can speak up. So I really want you to think about these sort of things. And one of the things I want to mention that I find very important is about people of colour and in particular black vegans. We um, use um, black vegans in particular and other minority groups as props in our discussions and trying to get the vegan message out. And I don't think that that's good enough. 
know, we can still be respectful and we can still say certain things, but I don't think we should be using and commodifying one type of person just to further the vegan and the animal rights agenda. And so I want you to think about a few things here and really be mindful of these things, especially when you're interacting with people and especially online. So what sort of language do you use when you're promoting vegans? Is it positive or negative? Encouraging or discouraging? Is it empathetic or is it judgmental? Is it preaching or is it teaching? Um, what sort of language do you use when you're talking about other cultures and other things that they do? You know, I've noticed a lot of racist language online, in particular in regards to China and dog meat, Middle East and live export trade, and um, Japan and dog and away. So you have to be really, really aware of these things. Don't fall into these traps. What about trigger words that you use? Certain words may really upset someone because of what's happened to them in the past. Some of those examples would be like slave, rape, concentration camp. They're really heavily loaded words that really might cause harm to someone. And what about um, giving health advice? And unsolicited in particular, if someone says they're sick or if someone is um, disabled, um, giving them advice that you can, you can cure them by being vegan. Now, all of these things I've seen online quite a few times, and I'd like for you, next time you're engaging with people online, maybe you see this sort of behaviour, maybe call someone out and say, that's not the best way to handle the situation. And um, as I was saying before, being vegan is great, but staying vegan is really important. And just because I think something's important doesn't mean other people think it's important. And there's a, a guy called Nick Cooney who's written some great books, including How to Be Great and Doing Good. This is the latest one. And there's a group called Humane Lead Labs do a lot of research um, on advocacy, animal rights, what works and what does not work. So I suggest you check those out if you've not heard of them. And then found that the most effective way um, of getting people to eat less meat is about animal welfare. So not animal rights. I care about animal rights and you know, animal ethics. But sometimes when you're speaking to other people, you want to see what they care about the most. So um, going forward, if you want to be promoting veganism, find out what people care about the most. How can you plant these seeds of compassion to get someone else to change, to get someone else to think about something different? Um, vegans were still one to two percent of the community. We've still got a lot to, a lot, a long way to go. We've still got a lot of work to do, and that one to two percent hasn't changed for 20 years. And so work out what you're most passionate about, the things that you can communicate the best, and focus on these ideas. Um, I want us to all learn from, it, from other movements, and I think like the LGBTQI community is a really good example, because um, there's a lot of allies, there's a lot of people who support what they do, whether or not they're lesbian or gay. And how do we get other people to be allies to the people who and the rights movement. How do we get those things to happen? And so I want us all to learn from each other, to be more compassionate, and um, to realise that all systems of oppression need to be changed. And I want you to be nice online, which you to be kind to each other, but you to be mindful of um, the language you're using. And um, yeah, you can still disagree with someone online it doesn't mean you have to be mean or call names. And you know, as much as it's annoying at times, if someone sees you and you're the only vegan they know and you're acting in a certain way, then they might stop being vegan or they might not care about veganism because of what you're communicating to. Here's my top ten tips for online etiquette. I hope you can read that or you'll take a photo or something. Um, but um, the, the top one would be act, don't react. So, um, can you read? Yeah. Act, don't react. Keep private matters private. 
Use correct spelling, grammar and punctuation. Be mindful of what you share. Be conscious of who will read your posts. Be kind. Keep passwords secret. And if you see someone being mean online, please report it. Report cyberbullying. If you use something someone's created, please credit them. No one seems to care about this anymore, but it's very important. And everything you do online, take responsibility for it. So here's a couple of um, bit, uh, bits of advice from me. Um, do your own research, investigate and learn some more. So some of the things I've mentioned today, please go and, and um, find out some more information about them. Focus on the things that connect us. There's so many things we have in common with each other. Try not to think about all the other things we don't have in common. And um, just remember we're all made up of the same things, but we're not all the same. Everyone does things in a different way than each other. And my 20 years of being vegan, the best tip I can give you is to lead by example and be consistent. I think it's, it's really that simple. And it becomes easier the more you do it. Lead by example and be consistent. And I really want you to be the best version of yourself, the best vegan you can be, and start right now. Um, so focus on encouragement, focus on educating and planting seeds, remember compassion and remember kindness. And here's um, the way you can connect with me online, my Vegan and Vegan website here and all the different social media channels, including Instagram now, and my leashontail.com website and all social media channels. And I hope you've all learned something new today, I hope you've got something else for that. If if you have any questions, come and speak to me afterwards or find me online and enjoy the rest of the day. Thank you.